hi guys you are welcome back to my channel and if you are a new subscriber i say welcome to this family if you are my whole subscriber thank you welcome once again so in this tutorial i are going to be cutting the down parts and the body parts of the ankara style that i have seen on the screen the first thing that you need to do is to fold your fabric into four with this you'll be able to cut both the front and the back together and when you want to fold, fold it in such a way that it will accommodate quarter of your hip when you fold plus extra 4 inches. So that 2 inches will be for allowance and 2 inches will be for um, zipper. So you fold it the way I fold it now. Okay. When you fold it this way, from that folded edge at this front side that is facing the camera you are going to make sure that you measure and check if it accommodates your hip divided by four plus extra two inches the other two inches at the back will serve as our zipper allowance and mind you when you want to start marking the double folded edge that is facing you will be the side and the single folded with the opening of the zip is going to be the center which means we are going to start our marking from that hand. The first thing is to mark out the beginning of your um, chalking. I mean, you are going to cut out this fa factory edge of your fabric because I don't like use, working with it at all. So I'll just cut it out and I will start all my work. So here I'm trying to check if it accommodates my hip plus extra two inches allowance and then the other allowance that you see at the edge is the zipper allowance. So since we have folded it and we are good to go, the next thing is to locate all our points. Now from that starting line, you are going to locate your starting line. And because we are working with a gown, not a skirt as it were, I'm going to lift up my tape to the half length. So the half length of this gown is 16 inches. So I'm going to place my tape on 16 inches from the starting point and then locate my hip line okay so i'm going to mark my hip line like you see me doing here then i'll also trace down and locate my knee length it is very important to locate your knee length when you are cutting straight down that will give your um your gown especially straight gown a shape at the knee area it won't just be free from the hip like so now after doing that move to your knee area and mark it into a visible straight line so that we'll know where we are working on okay now after marking all this line the next thing for us to do is to locate our gown length okay so i'm going to lift up my tape like so the knee length that i'm working with here is 35 inches so on that 35 inches i'm going to place my tape at 35 and i'm going to locate the gown length which is the full gown length so after locating the full gown length don't forget to add your emmy allowance to the length of your gown the length of the gown i'm working with is 54 inches and i'm going to be marking it into a straight line after marking that into a straight line i'm going to add extra two inches allowance to it you can see that I first of all mark the length of the gown before carefully adding the stitching allowance. That is to have a accurate measurement for both back and front. So I'm going to mark that into a straight line as well. So we have done that and we have gotten all our length. The next thing for us to do now is to mark our body circumference. Now to mark our body circumference, you see the way I touch that fabric. The folded edge that is very close to the zipper allowance, which is the single folded, that is where we are going to start our chalking. That right to the side where we have our double folded edge, which is going to serve as our side. So you place your tape like you see me doing, leaving the zipper allowance at the back, and then mark the quarter of your waist so the waist that i'm working with here is 34 inches so i'm going to be dividing it by four and i'm going to mark it like so 
I will move to my hip line and I'm going to divide my hip by 4. The hip I'm working with is 39. So divided by 4 is 9 and a half and quarter. You'll go ahead and mark it. Then we'll go to our knee area. So to get the shape of your knee area, whatever you mark on your hip, just minus 1 inch from it or minus 4 inches from your regular hip measurement. Let's say your hip is 38 minus 4. We give you... um. 34 so 34 divided by 4 is what we are going to mark here okay so we we'll move to the length of the gun whatever it is that you mark on your knee area mark the same thing on your m mark it on your gun m like you see me doing in this video then we we'll move to the upper side of the dress we are going to add that allowance to the waist which is one inch Go ahead and add that one inch that allowance and add two inches sewing allowance. Okay, so I'm going to add two inches to the side. You may not add two inches to yours if you are not going to be sewing the lining inward, but because I'm going to be sewing each side of the lining by quarter of an inch, that is why I'm adding two inches sewing allowance. So I noticed on the waist area, I only added the, the sewing allowance, I didn't add it that allowance which is one inch so i'm going to be adding that one inch which is the remaining side of the fabric okay so the next thing for us to do is to mark every point together now you are going to connect all the points together connect your waist to your hip to your knee and then to your gown length you can use your curve ruler and you can also use your straight ruler so just connect the shape like you see me doing here your waist to your knee you can see that that shape from the hip to the knee is kind of curvy then we are going to blend it out that is because we don't just want it to be straight up from the hip area now the next thing you are going to be doing is to eliminate any hip bulge now come down from your hip by two inches like you see me doing and then mark whatever it is that you have on your hip on that same line so my hip divided by four which is 39 and half and quarter i'm going to mark it and i'm going to have the same stitching allowance of two inches okay i'm trying to mark the line so that you can see i'm going to add the same allowance of two inches like so then i'm going to blend it up straight then there won't be any hip bulge so by the time you finish sewing the hip area is going to relax so well on your client now from the allowance that you had it at the hem you are going to cut it through so now that we are done cutting we have the front that is on fold and then we have the back that is two pieces Okay, this is the first and the second. So the next thing you do is just to indicate the wrong side of the fabric. And we are done cutting the down part of this gown. So guys, if this video has been helpful until this moment, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel. So let's move to the upper part of this gown. When you want to cut the upper part, you are going to fold into four the same way you folded the down part into four and this time around you are making sure that you fold according to the large body circumference which is the bust so your bust measurement divided by four plus extra four inches this time around we are adding our zipper allowance then we are adding extra three inches because of the kind of dust that we are putting we are putting princess dust on the front so you place the tape that like you see me doing and then mark your shoulder divided by two now the next thing you do is to place your tape on that um half of your shoulder and to mark your bust point then also mark your under bust line and also go ahead and mark your waist line so the next thing is to grab your ruler and then connect everything into a straight line connect your waist to a straight line connect your under bust and then go ahead to your bust point and connect into a straight line like you see me doing in this video 
So the next thing for us to do is to move to our arm o area. And uh, this time around, I will move to where I divide my shoulder and I will come down by one inch for my shoulder slope. From that shoulder area, I'm going to come down by half of my arm o. And half of your arm o can be calculated by dividing your bust by six and then adding 1.0 to it. So I'll mark my half of my arm o, which is 7.5 inches for this person. So it is after the shoulder slope that I'll mark it. Then I'm going to create it into a straight line like others. Now the next thing for us to do now is to mark exactly what we have on our shoulder. Divide by two and place the same thing on your bust, um, your arm area. That is the chest line. Now I'm going to connect that line into a straight line. Okay, so that will serve as our arm area. Now after marking that line, I'm going to divide the line by two. I'll get the midpoint and then come inward by half an inch. Half an inch. So after marking the half an inch, next thing to do is to create your ammo curve. You connect the shoulder slope to the midpoint. So on the chest line, you're going to divide your bust by four and then connect all the points like so. So I'm going to connect the shoulder to the midpoint like you see me doing. With this curve ruler and then from that midpoint i'll connect it to that my bust divided by four i hope this is clear enough mm -hmm. so with this we have created our arm o now we are going to proceed to the other part of the body on the bust points i'm going to place my bust divided by four on the same spot just like i did on the chest line then I'll move to my under bust. I'll mark my under round under bust divided by four plus allowance. But this time around, let us mark the round under bust divided by four, just like we did on the bust area. So I'm going to divide it by four. I'm working with 34. So I'm going to mark 34, which is eight and a half. Then on the waistline, I'll do the same thing. I'll divide my waist divided by 4 and I'm going to mark whatever it is that I have here. You see all the all the lines are ready so we are going to connect all these lines together. Connect your chest line to your bust point and then to the waist line and then to your waist. Okay, I mean to your under bust and then to your waist. So after doing all of this, we are going to add our stitching allowance. So from the chest line, you're going to add your stitching allowance. And before then, I'm going to locate the nipple to nipple so that I can locate my dart. The nipple to nipple I'm working with is 7.5 divided by 2. I'm going to locate where it falls. Don't forget to add half an inch to it. So 3 and a half plus half. 3 and a half and quarter plus half, that is 4 quarters. So I'm going to mark on 4 quarter, and I'm going to mark it into a straight line. Now, after you might have done that, to connect your princess that, I'll go to my ham o area and I'm going to get the midpoint of my ham o and then I'm going to blend it to my nipple point. Just the same ham o that we use, uh, the same midpoint that we use for our ham o, I'm just going to blend it together to my boss point just to create my princess that shape. And that's all for the regular princess that not busty now the next thing you are going to do is to extend this princess that shape by one inch i don't know if you understand what i'm saying but please look at it carefully and then extend it by one inch so just extend it by one inch and the important of that is so that you won't have any shortage of fabric when you are joining your princess that because there's a way your princess that will look shorter than the length of the arm o and that may affect your arm o but just add that one inch so that you will avoid any shortage and after sewing you can decide if you want to increase the arm o 
so i think that is okay by me so i'm just going to create the new arm oh like so just to avoid any shortage so before adding stitching allowance all around the next thing is to mark our neck width so i'm working with neck width of four inches and then the neck depth of 7.5 the neck depth of 7.5 because if you look at the style very well the net is kind of um long and then before they create the regular neckline i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say so i use 7.5 for the neck depth so guys you can make it eight inches depending on you because i eventually increase the length when i when i finish cutting so you can make use of eight inches or nine inches depending on you so i'm going to connect it like this this is our neck first marking of the front neckline now we're going to mark the back neckline and the second neckline for the front now to do that everything has the same neck width but the back neckline is higher than the front neckline so for the back neckline i chose to use 1.5 for the depth and then for the second front neckline I hope you understand this for the second neckline i tried to go down by three inches i tried to go down by three inches so you could do 3.5 but i did three inches because i don't the owner of the clothes does not want it to really show like that so i'm going to use my curve ruler to connect the front the front curve like this which is the second neckline for the front and then I'm going to do the same thing for the back neckline. I'm going to connect it to the, sh to the neck width, rather. You do the same thing that you did for the front. You do it for the back. Since you are working with the same neck width, don't forget the neck width is always the same thing. Only the neck depth is mostly, at times, different. Okay? So after doing all of that, I'm going to mark my back neckline. Don't forget it is 1.5 so i'll connect it to the neck width just like see me doing now i have marked that i'll move to the side of my design and i'm going to add my stitching allowance all through i had a stitching allowance of three inches because of the dart allowance and then two inches sewing allowance now i've added all the allowance the next thing for us to do now is to cut it out don't forget to add your hemming allowance now i cut the arm oh, on the shoulder area i created my shoulder slow and then cut it out don't forget that when you are cutting your neckline you start from the back neckline first before you cut the front neckline so just look at the way i did it and then you follow the same trend and cut the back neckline the next thing to do is to cut the front neckline Cut the first one, which is three inches downward. After cutting, then you can go ahead and cut your V neckline. Guys, don't forget, I told you I later increase the depth of this front, but you can you can increase it as long as you want. So this is what we are going to be using to cut the net. We just add allowance around it, so keep it safe when you cut it. So you are going to add allowance around it, allowance close to one inch. Because you're going to be stitching it and also be turning the neckline. Okay? So, the next thing for us to do now is to slit open the princess that. And the princess that is going to be for the front alone. So, I'm not going to be cutting with the back. I'll just slit open like so. Like you see me doing, I'm just going to slit it open like this. And then we are done with our front cutting. And then the upper bodies we are done cutting the upper bodies the back we have the regular dart which is the straight dart i am going to go ahead and cut the shoulder through i will also go ahead and cut the lining for each piece of this um upper bodies i will cut for the center i will also cut for the back and i will also cut for all the side front guys don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so after doing that let us work on the back neckline you can see that i have ruled out my zipper allowance now to remove bulge from the back 
of this particular dress you just go up by 1.5 inches the reason for any body is excess fabric okay and that is because the back length half length of the back is usually shorter to the front so if you use the same thing you are going to have a zip bulge so at the center of the back go up by 1.5 inch or one inch and then blend it to the side so with that you have eliminated any bulge so next when next you are cutting your fabric just note that your back half length is shorter than your front so always shorten it by one inch or two inches that will remove any budge at the center so guys with this we have come to the end of cutting of this beautiful gown if you are interested in watching the cutting of the sleeve please check my channel i have a video explaining how i cut the sleeve of this style guys please subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and also hit the notification bell so that you get notified when i drop a new video see you guys in my next video